B-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We been going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters, got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause only this is ready So get about it, goodbye Hold on, we just saying hi Five somebody rise up We days catch us live Somebody was go Good evening Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. I hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this day or hope the show finds you in great spirits, as hopefully it does, even though we are coming together uh, to discuss something that is not so great news, great of news. But this is a case that I have been wanting to talk about for a while now. But then as soon as I came around to it, the, you know, the, the case basically kind of just fizzled out and other cases kind of got dropped in my lap type of situation. And now we got this new one, which I mean, this new update, which is absolutely devastating. And we got to talk about it. Like I said, it's, it's, it's going to be this is not going to be the longest show ever. OK, I just wanted to give you guys the updates about this young 19 year old man that was now discovered now discovered after two years after a two year long search and of course I'm talking about Dylan Rounds and again I want to say you know may he rest in peace my thoughts and prayers go out to the family I know I'm going to say this later on but I might as well say it in the beginning just in case they may be watching this show or maybe not they're not but i know that they're busy doing a lot of things right now ah i can't believe it but we got to talk about this give you guys some updates about this again i am still very shocked about it um it's just crazy how you don't think it's going to come and then it just shows up right information like this just shows up so we're going to talk about this okay we definitely are. So please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. Please and thank you. Don't forget to hit that reaction button if you're watching on other platforms. Hit that follow button on all my platforms. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, X, Facebook. Follow me on all those things. If you're on YouTube, please crush that subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Please do me a favor. Hit that, uh, hit that join button down below. Become a member. That'd be greatly appreciated, of course. If you feel like supporting in any other way, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash the Pascal show. Check that out as well. Or you can check out my merch page, pascalmerch.com. Please, please check it out. Please and thank you. Okay. We gotta we're gonna get straight into this, okay? Because like I said, it's getting late and we just gotta get into this. It's not the greatest of news, like I said. This is not the greatest of news but 19 year old dylan rounds apparently has been his remains have been discovered now he went missing in may of 2022 so he's been missing for a good long time now and suddenly now out of nowhere his remains have been found again I know that this was a case that a lot of people were trying to figure out. A lot of people, this this really grabbed the heartstrings of a lot of people trying to understand what happened, why did it happen, et cetera. Don't worry. We are going to be talking about that. We are going to be going down, taking a little trip down memory lane as far as the timeline, uh, a brief uh, breakdown of the timeline and all that um, leading up to an, the arrest of James Brenner. And all that stuff. We're going to be looking at a lot of things, you know. And yes, uh, criminal med. Yeah, there's a good possibility that Brenner just gave up. Finally just gave it up. Okay? There's a good possibility, right? So I'm hoping, as Fashion Police said on X, yes, live in peace now or rest in peace now as well. And of course, hopefully the family, okay, is able to press forward. Like I keep saying, like when Riley Strain's remains were found, right? I said, okay, this closes a chapter. It doesn't close the book, but it definitely closes the chapter on where he was, where Riley is. You could say the same thing about Dylan. 
this chapter of where he is has now been closed. But the rest of the book is still wide open. We still got many, many chapters seeking justice, etc. for this young man. Again, he was 19 years old. He went missing in the... I'm trying to remember exactly, so I have this correct. Okay? But in the Nevada, Utah border area, uh, he was in an RV camper near the border of Nevada and Utah. All right? And... Of course, there's been a lot of new things. There were things that have transpired over time when it comes to this particular case. So like I said, we're going to be looking at taking a little bit of a trip down memory lane. But first, we got to go to why you guys are all here. Because I know some of you guys aren't interested in hearing all that extra stuff. You just want to hear the title and what you're here for. So here are some details about him being found. So missing teen. Dylan Round's body found two years after his disappearance as suspect James Brenner leads cops to burial site. This is big. This is very, very big. So, again, this James Brenner arrested. And it, two years later, he finally speaks out. He finally leads local law enforcement to the place where he left Dylan Rounds. That's crazy, guys. And I know there's been a lot of theories floating around. I remember this like, like it was yesterday. There was, there was a lot of theories about stuff, about Dylan and, and the connection with this particular individual or how they cross paths and all that stuff. And I say, well, let's just put those things to rest for right now because I know that there's theories. Trust me, I get it. Because this was a whole big mystery two years ago and continued on for a very, very long time. So let's take a look at this. Like I said, the missing, uh, the body of missing teen Dylan Rounds has been discovered two years, two long years after his disappearance. So suspect James Brenner, 59, informed authorities of his of the remote burial site located in the Utah desert as part of a plea agreement on Tuesday. Now, let me just tell you something. I hope that this plea agreement is not that tantalizing, except maybe him not looking at the DP or something of that sort. I hope he stays in prison for a very, very long time. You get what I'm saying? Because if it's like a plea agreement, whether you, you know what I mean, usually you're thinking, what do you mean? Lesser charges, uh, uh, shorter sentences, or possibly facing shorter sentences and all that stuff. Hell no. Nah, I am not here for it. I am not. Okay? So let's continue. And of course, this is Dylan right here. He was only 19 years old, guys. And, of course, this is James Brenner, the monster, all right? He's the only su uh, suspect charged regarding to Round's demise. And he's been in custody for months. Of course, this is just some footage of Round's. Now, interesting information here. It says here, Brenner squatted on uh, Round's family farmland, okay, in Utah, where Round's worked at the time of his disappearance. And I'm still wondering, like I said, I'm still, you know, I've never talked about the, the case on the show and all that, so it's still new to me. But I am quite curious as to how or why this went down the way it went down. And who is this Brenner character? Okay. And guidance, yeah. He squatted on the, on the family's farmland. So, yeah, he lived with them at some point, guidance, for sure. He lived with them at some point. All right? And that's crazy. All right? And uh, just so you guys know, I was just recently, literally uh, just about an hour ago uh, or two, uh, I was on Court TV 
with uh, on closing arguments with Vinny Paladin. Uh, I had a great time. Hopefully, you guys were able to watch it. If you don't, if you didn't, I'm sure there'll be clips up on Court TV uh, tonight or tomorrow. You, you see what I'm saying? So, if you get some time, take a gander. We had a really great conversation. It was an honor to be on the show and uh, be a part of the conversation. We, of course, we're talking about Sebastian Rogers' case and all that, and uh, he had a lot of good questions, and he brought a really good expert on as well to come in and put in their commentary. And uh, like I said, it was just really, really nice to be a part of the show. Sorry for the left turn, but I just wanted to let you guys know, um, you know, I was over there on their platform, and it was a good time, okay? Uh, so, again, Dolphin, thank you. Real quick. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. You guys had good chemistry. That's awesome. Thank you, Tipsy. Thank you. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you guys saw it. Okay. That means a lot. All right. But we're not here for that. Okay. But I did want to share that with you guys before. All right. Before I forgot. It was, you know, it's not every day you get on national TV. Right. So, uh, it's something I'm still getting used to, okay? But I had a really, really good time. It was a really good conversation, and uh, I would love to go back again. So let's get back into this, okay? So from my understanding, he lived there. He was squatting in that house or on their farmland, living with the Rounds family, and that is big, okay? That's very big. So Rounds mysteriously went missing over Memorial Weekend from his desert home in and that's the thing. Is it Lucin? Okay. Is it Lucin? Oh, it airs again at 10? Cool. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to actually watch it, depending on when we get done with this show, right? But is it Lucin? Okay. Madeline said yes. Okay, cool. So Lucin, Utah, about 200 miles west of Salt Lake City, on May 28th, 2022, he was only 19 years old. Brenner was charged in connection to Round's demise in March of 2023 and face and faces aggravated M and A or de uh, desecration of a human body. Interesting. The 59-year-old has been the only suspect charged regarding to Dylan Round's demise and has been in custody for months for firearm charges. It's interesting that they have him in for something else, right? They weren't able to, I guess they weren't able to charge him. But, well, they were able to charge him, but he was, he's been in custody for months for firearm charges. That's interesting, right? It makes me think of Donald Stephen McDougal. Remember that mother lover? I ain't got no clothes on. Remember that guy? Anybody remember that? Audrey Cunningham, ring a bell. They got him on other charges while Audrey was out there still missing. Remember? But that's interesting, right? Brenna squatted in a trailer on the family's farmland in Lucen where Rounds worked at the time of his disappearance. He was connected to the uh, Rounds demise after evidence was discovered near his trailer. Rounds' boots were found next to a dirt pile on the property along with his phone that was at the bottom of a pond. Now, of course, long-awaited answers. Rounds' family has has finally been given answers after two years of trying to figure out what happened. They were informed that Round's body was found around 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Of course, they say, we thank everyone for their support and love. This, of course, is Round's mom that said this. We are grateful. We now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. Yes, like I said, finding him was just half of the story. Now that they found him, now they have the whole journey towards justice, which still, of course, is heartbreaking. Box Elder County Sheriff's Office gave an update in a statement on Facebook finding Round's remains. The FBI assisted, 
the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office by processing the area for evidence and recovering the remains. The remains are in the possession of the Utah Office of Medical Examiner of the Medical Examiner for confirmation of identity. Our hearts go out to the family of Dylan Rounds. We offer our sincerest, sincerest condolences for the loss of their family member. We understand that the pain of their loss is immeasurable, and we want to express our dearest sympathies to them. It is our hope that we can find peace, that they can find peace moving forward. Now, of course, like any mother that hasn't had answers to a ongoing investigation and search of their loved one, of course they're going to be they're going to express disappointment in local authorities and how they're handling the case. I feel like I'm just going to be real. I feel like that is that goes with every single case that we have ever uh, covered. I think I've seen that maybe once or one or two cases where they're saying, yeah, law enforcement is doing a fantastic job. They're doing everything they need to do, so on and so forth. To this day, I have yet to hear. It's it. I'll just say this to this day. It's very rare to hear. Families of people who are. Missing out here saying, oh, yeah, they're doing. a Stand up job. It's very rare, okay? And understandably, I don't blame them, right? The court case uh, was first delayed from October to November, only to be delayed again another six months. In December, Cooley, the mom, was informed the case would not be happening until May of 2024. Yes, it's disappointing. It takes that long, and it's actually because of the attorney's schedule. But it's not another continuance it originally sounded like that was going to be the case but then the defense surprised us all of course he says uh i keep having to ask people or i keep having people ask if we were worried that the dates could be uh, held back again but that's not the case with a preliminary hearing that's not something that can be altered now of course, this young man was missing for a very, very long time. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he, is, he has been found. But it's because of this monster, this James Brenner, somebody who is living on their property, squatting on their property, that suddenly out of nowhere did some unthinkable thing and then took the remains of this 19-year-old boy and put him out in the desert. He was the only person to know his whereabouts. And that's the only reason why we were able to find, or they were able to find Dylan Rounds. Ain't that something? That is really, really something. So let me uh, share a couple things. Okay. In fact, hold on. Because honestly, there hasn't been a whole lot of information out here. So I'm, you know, from like local news from what I've I've gathered. So I want to share with you guys this in this video. It's from it is from East Idaho News. It's a YouTube channel. Um, they've been covering a lot of the uh Idaho 4 case as well. So I do want to share this with you guys. And of course, I want to give credit where credit is due, of course, because, you know, we don't roll like that here in, in these streets. OK, but I want to share this bit of this video. Let's take a look. Hit the number one. Let me know you guys can hear this. I'm Nate Eaton with EastTitleHoNews.com. We have some breaking news to bring you right now. The body of Dylan Rounds has been found. Dylan Rounds, his remains have been found in the remote area of Lucen, Utah. Dylan is the young 19-year-old who vanished over Memorial Day weekend back in 2022. He was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border. 
when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning, his remains were found near or in Lucin in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, Rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished, and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. I mean, it, you know what's really aggravating me? Um, you know, obviously, this is a case that honestly was hot like fire in the very, very beginning, and then it just kind of dissipated. And of course, we found out later on that this young man was no longer with us. But at the same time, it still breaks my heart when you find out that I mean, of course, that was the theory for a long time, et cetera. It still hurts and it still is aggravating to find that, to find out that he was found gone, right? And it took two years. And this is another thing which really is crazy. It's crazy that the only person that actually knew where Dylan's remains were is the monster that was locked up. It's the monster that led law enforcement out into the middle of the desert to say, here he is. Now, ain't that something? Now, ain't that something? It hurts my heart to he hear that because if you really think about it, of all the other cases that we have been covering as of late, shoot, everything from Car Caleb Harris, that case, which of course we're going to be circling back and talking about here very soon, to Sebastian Rogers, to all the other cases that we have covered where we still do not know where that person, that loved one is. There is at least one person that knows exactly where that loved one is. Think about that for a second. That's a terrifying thought. That's absolutely a terrifying thought. It hurts my heart because you hear this kind of thing and it's like, man, there's somebody. With Sebastian, there's at least one person that knows something. There's at least one person. Same thing with Caleb Harris. There's at least one person that knows where that young man is. Whether he's alive or not, somebody does. And now it's the same thing with this. And we hear this countless times. Ain't that crazy? Madeline Soto. Audrey Cunningham. Shoot, there's at least one person that knows exactly what happened to Shanquella Robinson. What's interesting is the one person that knows exactly what happened to themselves is Carly Russell. Ain't that interesting, right? She's the only one that holds the key to her own disappearance. But nonetheless, think about that. In all these cases, there's at least that one person that knows the exact truth. Pretty wild, y'all. Let's continue on. I appreciate East Idaho News for this information. Real talk. Please go check out the full video over there. His mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing <laughs> Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in. Um, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. Look at this. Look at this, y'all. That's crazy. That is crazy. All right? We're, we're going to continue here, but uh, real quick, just so you guys know. Um, uh, yes, Carly Russell did get out, get off scot-free, okay? 
I'm not fully satisfied with it. I get it. The law is the law, but at the same time, bleh, all right? Or at least financially charge the, the, the pants off of her. You know what I'm saying? But whatever, okay? Not cool. Not happy with it, but it is what it is. Let her live her life. The world needs more baristas, okay? But very, very wild. If you look at this, va- look how vast that is. That's that's nothing. Look at that. I'm gonna op- I'm gonna make this bigger for you guys. Look at that. Look at it. That's insane, y'all. That's insane. That 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 gives me chills. You know what it gives me? It instantly makes me think of Seven. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, what's in the box? That movie? Seven, which is a phenomenal movie. Go check it out when you get some time. If you haven't seen, if you haven't seen Seven and you are a true crime fan, what is wrong with you? <laughs> You just you just faking it. You just uh, what would the kids say back in the day? You're just a poser. Okay, watch seven. Have mercy is amazing. Have mercy is amazing. But moving on, pretty crazy though. You see something like this, and you're like, wow. You know. <sighs> okay, moving on. But this is pretty crazy seeing this with my own two peepers. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he, again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point. Uh, but they, they do have the remains because of, uh, of where James Brenner led them. This is- like I said... They would not have known anything at all. Law enforcement and family, et cetera. True crime podcasters that have been covering this story for the longest time. If James Brenner, if that monster did not sit there and work out some sort of deal. We'd all be doing podcasts, stories, documentaries, you name it. Wondering where this young man is it would be an ongoing mystery look at it like just look at how vast how empty how easily it is that someone can do something really really bad to another individual and probably get away with it this is in the middle of nowhere y'all it's the same thing as uh when i think about the two kansas women the two Kansas mothers that went missing, right? They were taken, allegedly. There was foul play that was because of the scene that was left behind. Their car was left behind. There's clear sign of something going on, which, of course, I've, I've been hearing that windows were shattered or a window was shattered or something like that, which shows some sort of indication of foul play, which it definitely would. But the fact that that taking if they were if they were taking which it seems like they were happened in the middle of the streets in the middle of a highway in the middle of nowhere desolate flatlands nowhere to be no one around no cameras to to catch crimes committed or anything of that sort so imagine what dylan went through and this monster took advantage of being out there in the middle of nowhere knowing that he could have gotten away with with this if he didn't leave certain things behind let's be real pretty crazy pretty crazy this is a spot where james brenner had his camper he lived near dylan rounds out there both of them were in separate campers and when his when dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late may of 2022 they found his boots right there behind that mound of dirt which was some distance off and there was also a shed right by James Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And mm. within a few days of Dylan disappearing, 
James Brenner cleaned that shed to the to the point of how it looks now. You know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family. And wow. he did take those to a uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would would likely have come into play if if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, according to Dylan's family, as part hmm. of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. Somebody said in the chat, uh, Soybean just said, needle in a haystack. Absolutely. Like I said, this is in the middle of nowhere. This is in the middle of nowhere, y'all. That's scary. That's scary. As much as I say, you know, sometimes I'm like, man, it'd be nice to just, you know, you know, move somewhere, live off the fat of the land. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I, I, I worry about this kind of stuff. This is terrifying to think of being out there in the middle of nowhere and there's no one to see crimes happening. Anything goes and it, it, and it don't matter. That's scary. And if you disappear someone could successfully make you disappear if they check all their boxes scary y'all i'm sorry that's terrifying i spoke with dylan's family they of course are a lot of emotions tonight this mm -hmm. has been a, um such a mystery since for two years now but candace did ask me to uh, convey we thank everyone for their support and love we are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And of course, we we just kind of read that same soundbite. But imagine you're out there in the middle of nowhere, you're doing your thing, you live where you live, etc. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this crime happens, and then because of environment. You get you get disappeared. And I want to say this too. I I I gotta say this too, okay? Uh real talk, I I I do have to say to law enforcement, to those that were looking into this that were trying to crack the code, trying to figure this whole thing out, I commend them. Because without the boots, without the phone, et cetera, all the other pieces that were just kind of strewn about, without them finding all those pieces of, inf all those little pieces, they may, may not have been able to get this monster and bring him to justice. Yes, it took a little bit of time. Yes, it took a little bit of time for him to actually go to the place and go, here, here he is, he's right there. Right. But now, no matter what, we're able to close that chapter and now we're able to get justice. The family is able to get justice. But that's scary stuff. Let me uh, let me play a little bit more of this. OK, there's a little bit of map time in here, too. So I want to share this with you guys rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Look at that. Again. Look at it. And yes, Marshall, you're absolutely real. You're absolutely true. Right. You, you, someone could easily disappear, easily get disappeared. All right living in a very, very metropolitan area. Absolutely. But the fact that if you look at this, look at the look at the vastness of just sand. Nothing but sand. No cameras, no cell phones, no, no people, no houses, no ring cameras, no nothing, not a damn thing out there. Imagine Someone easily just being able to go out there in the middle of nowhere and digging a hole. Think about that for a second. Okay, and sand and sand and sand. like it's just nothing but sand. Okay, that's terrifying. In a metropolitan, in a metropolitan area or a heavily 
populated area, you might get possible ring cams, security cams, uh, street cams, cams from gas stations, et cetera, being able to catch a car or a person moving around. Now, I know with Sebastian Rogers' case, it is just not the case, okay? Not even the doggone case. But at the same time, nonetheless, you still, in these more metropolitan areas, have a possibility of somebody uh, eyewitness seeing something of, or of, of some sort like that, right? But out here, there's nothing. Like I said, you can get gone independently or with some sinister help. You can get gone. It's crazy. Let me play a little bit more. We're not playing this whole thing, okay? Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the <laughs> Nevada, Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucin quite a bit. This was another, if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to, to where Lucin is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there was a lot of, of look, a lot of focus on Montello. And then it seemed to shift into Lucin. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we, they do have an airport, as you can see, if we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's it's quite quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin, but this is where his body was found. And this is where family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief. I, I got to be honest. I, I, you know, of course, my, my heart goes out to the family. Uh, I'm absolutely shook um, that this is how this is how it went. OK, um, how this all has transpired. You know, he should be out here living his life, enjoying his life, doing more. And he's not. He was found in the middle of the desert because he was killed at the hands of a monster. Now, I'm quite curious to know a little bit more about James Brenner, a little bit more about this the whole situation, because it still makes you wonder what happened. Why? Did Dylan Rounds lose his life the way he lost his life? That part I don't get. That part I'm still wanting to know. And I'm hoping that maybe he, this, this piece of work tells the truth and opens up about that. Or I hope law enforcement know the information. The other piece I am kind of curious about is if Brenner has other victims. That's another piece I'm kind of curious about as well. I'm very curious about that. Are there other victims that have lost their lives at the hands of this monster? That's what I'd like to know. And hopefully we get some answers here very soon. Um, but I do want to play this piece. Okay, about apparently, apparently the parents a, a while back revealed some shocking details. So I want to share this video with you guys. People don't realize how big of a fight when I say how much of a win these charges are because this has been such an extreme fight to get to this point. Nearly one year after 19-year-old Dylan Rounds went missing from his Utah farm, charges are filed in his murder. His parents now speaking out, saying the charges are long overdue. It's about time. We've it. It is about time. But to know how long they've had what they have infuriates us even more. Last week, 59-year-old James Brenner was charged with one count of aggravated murder and one count of abuse or desecration of a human body. 
The charges come months after Brenner was named a person of interest in Rounds' case. He crossed paths, paths with a really bad, horrible guy that this is, I don't know what I can say other than it's unfortunate. According to a probable cause affidavit, investigators recovered a video from Rounds' phone that led to Brenner's arrest. Court documents read in part, quote, the video showed the defendant with blood stains on his arms and shirt as mm. he was cleaning a gun. The shirt, which defendant is wearing in the video, was analyzed and the victim's DNA was found on the shirt. Well, there it is, right? I see you guys here. Um, uh, 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 guidance just said, Pascal, look up his rap sheet. Brenner has history of aggravated A and attempted M. Wow. So yeah, he's a piece of trash. Clearly, he's a piece of trash. Right? He, him trash. Gabbage. Right? But let's continue. Rounds' his father, Justin Rounds, says news of the video was bittersweet. Felt good to at least finally have charges pressed on him and to find out. Didn't feel good to find out about the video, but it, but it did. About the video of him cleaning the blood off, and, off of the gun in his hands. Sorry, I got to play. I got to read this here really quick. Uh, Pascal, you know the piece of work didn't know Dylan's phone was recording on playback. When he was cleaning his gun, filled with red. He's an idiot. He's a dumb criminal. But at the same time, it's like... <laughs> keep being dumb, you dumb criminals. Thank you. Because you make the situation a lot easier, okay? You make the, the 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 search, you make the case a lot easier to solve when you play dumb. So thank you. Keep continuing being dumb. All y'all that are out here criminalizing out here in these streets. Let's continue on. I don't know how it felt. I can't really describe it. Well, it wasn't happy. The 19-year-old was last heard from in May of last year. So it was on May 28th, which was Saturday, that he called his grandma and said he had to get his um, truck in the shed. Rounds' mother, Candace Cooley, says her son called his grandmother to talk about some farming plans for the day. After that, he never made another call. And the reason it had to go in the shed is because he still had some triticale seed in it and his tarps had some holes. So if he didn't put it in the shed, then the rain gets into the seed, the seed sprouts, and it's no good. You lose mm. your so that's why it had to get in the shed. Um, from there, he said he'd call her back. Um, he reached out. He called Brenner about, I can't remember the exact time, but we know he was at the gate to get onto the property. Um, and then that was it. He was never heard from again. At the time of his disappearance, Rounds was working on his farm in Lucen, Utah, near the borders of Idaho and Nevada. His parents tell us he often traveled for work. Dylan chased his work. He had his stationary homes with me and his father, but he chased his work, uh, you know, just like so many custom people do. I mean, there's, there's custom crews all over this area for farming. There's people who come clear from Kansas to cut grain in Idaho. Wow. It That's crazy. That's that's good information. Like, I've never knew. I never knew that. You know what I mean? That's that's wild. It is such a common thing that people don't realize. Um, it happens all the time. Though he owned property in Lucen, Rounds did not live there. Dylan absolutely did not live in Lucen. He had a camp trailer there that he would stay in if he was planting, or he had his pivot on and needed to watch the water, so he had a place to sleep. He didn't live there. He would be back and forth. He'd, he'd stay more in eastern Idaho. Both Rounds' parents tell Law and Crime Network he was a dedicated farmer who dreamed of working since he was a child. Dylan just, he, from the time he could toddle around with his dad and his grandpa, um, that was just it. We knew, you know, he was going to be a farmer and that's what he was going to do. I mean, he didn't, his hobbies were farming. It sounds kind of odd. It's kind of odd a little bit, but that's what he liked. Since he was little, that's all he ever wanted to do. I mean, it sounds like his passion was farming. That makes sense. What do they say? If you love your job or you love your career, then you never work a day in your life. Right? 
You're constantly growing. You're constantly learning. Yes, days are hard. Some days are hard, but at the same time, there's still love and passion for that thing, for that thing that you're doing. So his passion and his career was also his hobby. That makes sense. Sounds like he just loved his job. He loved what he did. He was good at what he did, at what he did, what he did. And that's really amazing as well. So You know, it, it, it's sad when you hear uh, um, information like this. Like I said, this is just like a dusting, all right? There have been some really great content creators that have covered this case thoroughly. And I highly recommend you guys go and checking out those podcasters, those content creators that have been following Dylan Round's case for a very long time. since the Since the moment he went missing or was reported missing, People have been on this case like crazy. The theories have gone wild, understandably. When you don't have anything, questions and conspiracies start running amok. But again, we do now know that there was a monster that took his life. Somebody who was actually living on the farmland of his parents, of the Rounds farmland. How this went down, I don't know. Why did this transpire? We don't know, but I'm hoping that law enforcement are doing everything, everything they can to get the information out of this monster, James Brenner. And I also am still curious. Yes, there he had aggravated M uh, or, or attempted M, I'm sorry, and aggravated A. But at the same time, I'm talking about actual victims that are, have been erased from this planet. Are there other victims just like Dylan? that are out there in the, in possibly in the desert as well. I'm quite curious about that. This is a very heartbreaking piece of information. At the end of the day, of course, we knew that this was coming. But it still hurts and it still sucks for the family and the friends that love this man, this young man dearly. It still hurts. When you hear the actual thing that you're, you're dreading to hear for two years, which is, we found him. My thoughts and prayers go out to the family, to the Rounds family, and all the friends and family, even the people that have been touched by this case, because it is absolutely devastating to hear about this. It really is. No parent should ever bury their own kid no parent should ever go through this kind of turmoil, this kind of pain. No kid should be losing their lives in the way that this young man lost his life. But again, the chapter of trying to find Dylan Rounds is done. That is closed. Now we're in a new chapter. And that's to get justice. Hopefully swift justice for Dylan and if there are any other potential victims out here that have lost their lives at the hands of this monster, James Brenner, I hope they are found and those charges are brought swiftly to that monster as soon as possible. Anyway, guys, that is the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. All right. Just wanted to give you guys that update. Okay, so again, I appreciate you guys being here, blessing me with your time and, and energy and the comments. I really do appreciate it. Real talk. So do me a favor before we head out, hit that like button down below, please. And thank you. That would really mean a lot. May he rest in peace, guys. Now they can finally let him rest in peace. Let's get justice for this young man. And of course, I'll keep an eye on this. Of course, if there's any more developments on this case, and of course, if there's any more uh, other developments in other cases as well, trust and believe we're going to be talking about it. OK, we most definitely going to be talking about it. So please hit that like button down below. Hit that reaction button. Don't forget to hit that follow button. Follow me on all my platforms, TikTok, Instagram, X, a.k.a. Twitter, Facebook as well. Hit that follow button over there. All right. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. For the first time, I cover a lot of things, everything from true crime to pop culture on this channel. So please, if you like the way I tell my stories, 
please, by all means, crush that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, hit that join button down below. If you're watching on YouTube, check out my Patreon if you want to support any further than that. Patreon.com forward slash the Pascal show and check out PascalMerch.com. We got some really great stuff, really nice clothing out there. Okay. Anyway, guys, it is time to get going. I appreciate all y'all for being here again. Y'all are amazing. Have a great, beautiful night. If you're watching tonight, may you rest very nicely. We all deserve that. And I'll be talking to you guys tomorrow because there's a lot we need to talk about. A lot of developments going on in the Sebastian Rogers case. Don't worry. We will be talking about it in the morning. So be up right eyed and bushy tailed. We got some things to talk about. Anyway, guys, it is time to get going. Much love to you guys. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very soon. Have a blessed night, guys. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.